Hello, everyone. I want us to uh, take a step back and just remember what we've learned in CS450 this semester. Um, and I think my purpose as an instructor was to teach you three main uh, ideas. First one was fundamental uh, concepts behind most programming languages. Um, and here we covered functional programming in great detail. Uh, we covered delayed evaluation and controlling evaluation as well. Uh, we talked about control flow and exceptions by means of monads. We talked about object-oriented systems and how to implement them. We talked about monads, about macro systems. We also talked about a bit about pattern matching, variable scoping when we covered lexical scoping and dynamic scoping. We even covered in, well, all of our course was using immutable data structures, so we learned about the difficulties and the benefits of using uh, this, this family of data structures. Uh, we also learned the framework to describe language concepts. And by this, I mean we've learned uh, the lambda calculus as a basis for uh, programming, and also a formal system to specify programming languages. Um, we Further, we looked at how to implement such specifications by means of functional programs, pro function pro programming and monads. Uh, as a third main goal, we learned the methodology to understand complex systems by breaking down larger concepts in the smallest features. Uh, and we also try, I also tried to show you how do you separate, you know, like semantics from syntax sugaring and all that. Um, and now that hopefully you understand a complex system, such as a programming language, as just a combination of smaller simple systems that can be implemented quite easily. So just to demystify a bit uh, complex system. Uh, and we also learn in this whole semester, during this whole semester, how to implement and test features independently. Our whole communication was via test cases. Uh, and I hope you use that uh, in, in in, when you practice. Uh, so today we're going to revisit JavaScript's object system, and I'm going to introduce SimpleJS, which is just the S expression based syntax of the, fun, the, the small subset of JavaScript that we're going to support uh, for homework eight. I'm going to introduce LambdaJS, which is just a Lambda calculus basic homework four uh, extended with references, which is to say heaps. Uh, and also immutable objects. And finally, we're going to cover uh, translation from SimpleJS to LambdaJS, which is homework eight. Um, and why are we learning SimpleJS and LambdaJS? Well, SimpleJS is really to capture a relevant or an important, or I guess what I f felt it was necessary to be taught in JavaScript so that we can implement it and formalize it. Um, and the whole point is that you already know Lambda Calculus and you understand how the heap works, right? In terms of having a hash table and creating uh, handles and all that. Um, and you've learned how the environments worked in that uh, push where you can push a frame and frames are connected. And I showed you as well that this mechanism is essentially the same mechanism behind uh, object inheritance. So you've learned all the, the tools that you need to be able to implement this very small part of JavaScript. Um, and that's the main point is, I want to teach you the fundamentals of JavaScript as a programming language, building on the things that you've already learned. And I also wanted to teach you a different way of specifying a system. So in this case, we want to specify JavaScript. And instead of building an interpreter to it, like we did with Racket, right, where we built homework five and homework seven and four and three, where we always implemented an interpreter of a language. Now we want, I want to teach you that you, which you also probably will learn or have learned in CS451. Another way of specifying the meaning of a programming language is by translation, right? It's with a compiler. Uh, so today, in this course, I mean in this module 8, what we're learning is an alternative way of giving a meaning to a programming language, and that meaning is given by translating into another language, right? So in this case, 
from simple JS into Lambda JS. And this is known as denotational semantics, uh, as opposed to uh, the evaluation function, which is um, operational semantics. Oh, and, and just if you're curious, here operation means in terms of execution, so you're interpreting code, and the notation means how you um, refer to a term in terms of some other language. So here are the key points that we're going to cover uh, in JavaScript. So we're going to learn about, uh, we're going to have to implement uh, object prototypes. You know, for instance, in this case, we have two objects, A and B, where B is linked to A and therefore it inherits any field in A that isn't that hasn't been over or shadowed by the fields in B. Um, we've learned that functions work as constructors, so you can create any function. You can refer to a special object called this or a special variable called this, which is then used by the new operator. So when you call use the a new keyword, internally what you're doing is you're passing an object to C that is uh, passed as this. Uh, we've also learned about the prototype, which is a way to, um, I guess, a template of new objects where you can specify what are their initial fields. And you can use this to define the, the default fields of, of, a, of every instance of C, but also to define methods, which is more common, commonly used for that. So in this case, we use the little star to, to write what was inherited from the prototype. So foo and bar. Um, okay, so in the next video, we're going to cover simple JS.